All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? All my people in Manhattan, the Boogie Down Bronx, Queens, all the way out to Staten Island, and my home borough, Brooklyn. Back out with another video in honor of Super Bowl week. I'm doing another entry into the Greatest Games Ever series. And this is going to be on Super Bowl 47, a game that's very famous for two reasons. One, the head coach of the AFC champion 49ers. Or excuse me, AFC champion Ravens and the NFC champion 49ers were brothers, John and Jim Harbaugh. The halftime show given by Beyonce and also a third reason, the fucking blackout. <laughs> the blackout, you know, the blackout bowl, the Harbaugh bowl, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, <laughs> that's why this game's remembered. And it was a great game after the blackout. After the blackout, it was a great game. Up until then, you know, I mean, the Ravens were just whooping the Niners' ass. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. But... Let's go give a little backdrop on the team, starting with the AFC champion, Baltimore Ravens. Now, in the 2011 AFC championship game, the Ravens lost a close one to New England. They could have won had this man right here, Lee Evans, held onto the ball and caught the touchdown. It would have made it a 27-23 victory for the Ravens. Because he dropped it, the Ravens settled for a field goal, and the kicker, Billy Cundiff, missed wide left. And the Ravens lost 23-20 to the Patriots, and the Patriots subsequently lost to my New York Giants. <laughs> You're welcome, Ravens fans. But, uh... So going into 2012, the Ravens were a team on a mission. You know, led by their young quarterback, Joe Flacco, star running back Ray Rice, and Pro Bowl fullback Vontae Leach. Their big tight end, Dennis Petta, and their super receiving duo, Anquan Bolden, number 81, and 82, Torrey Smith. Future Hall of Famer, right guard, Marshall Yanda. And on the defensive side, Ray Lewis, who, who announced right before the playoffs that this was going to be his last ride. It was the final season in the legendary career of Mr. Ray Lewis. And, of course, they also had Terrell Suggs, who won the Defensive Player of the Year in the year 2011. And future Hall of Famer Ed Reed. This is Ed Reed and Suggs' last chance to win the Super Bowl with their big brother, Ray Lewis, their proverbial big brother, Ray Lewis. Of course, they also had Haloni Nada and safety Bernard Pollard. Okay, and, of course, let me not forget return specialist Jacoby Jones, so they picked up a free agency from the Houston Texans. Like I said, they were on a mission that year. You know, they started out really relatively high. I remember one game against the, I believe, the San Diego Chargers in San Diego. It was like fourth and twenty nine, and Joe Flacco hit Ray Rice, who t who got who Ray Rice subsequently picked up the first down. And after that, I was like, wow, this the Ravens team like so for some that special to happen. This may be their year. Maybe you know they hit a little rough patch. They lost to the Redskins, the Steelers, and the Denver Broncos, and then they kind of bounced back with the. Dominating victory over my New York Giants, unfortunately. And they finished the season at 10-6 and six and won the AFC North. In the playoffs, Ray Lewis's last home game, they defeated the Indianapolis Colts led by Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck advanced to the AFC Divisional Round, where they faced the number one seed, Peyton Manning, the Denver Broncos, in a game that was probably one of the greatest games of all time and definitely one of the best playoff games I've ever seen, if not the best playoff game I've ever seen. You know, I did a entry into the greatest games ever series on this game, the Mile High Miracle game, which I'm putting a link to the description down below. But here's Torrey Smith catching the pass on future Hall of Famer Champ Bailey. Of course, this is a back and forth game. Great plays made by the special team, both teams, special teams, their offense and their defense. But it ultimately ended, you know, with 30, and 30 with 30, with a couple seconds to go in the game, the score was 35 28. And if Joe Flacco hit, Wide receiver Jacoby Jones for a long touchdown pass, which sent the game in overtime. And then double overtime, rookie undrafted free agent Justin Tucker kicked the field goal, and the Ravens walked off on the Broncos 38-35. And they advanced to the AFC Championship game, where they were headed back to Foxborough to face Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, and they got their revenge. Anquan Bolden dominated the Patriots. You know, Anquan was a big a big dude. What was he, like 6'1", six, 6'2"? Six, six, Muscle-bound six, muscle Negro? <laughs> He manhandled them. They defeated the Patriots 20-13, to and the Ravens were on their way to Super Bowl 47. Now, the San Francisco 49ers in 2011, you know, were led by first-year head coach Jim Harbaugh and Alex Smith, who had been his seventh NFL season, along with other veteran run back Frank Gore, and they hadn't had any, really that much success. But this year, 2011, all changed. They went 13-3. and They were to the top seed in the NFC. They defeated the New Orleans Saints in the catch three game when Alex Smith hit Vernon Davis. And then they subsequently lost to my New York Giants in the NFC Championship game that year. In 2012, they were on a mission as well to kind of redeem themselves like the Ravens were. They, of course, they said they had Alex Smith and from the U, Frank Gore. They had Michael Crabtree, stood tight end Vernon Davis. Future Hall of Famer Randy Moss, who a lot of people don't even know was on this team. The offensive line was anchored by Joe Staley. On the defensive side, they had Patrick Willis, who was one of my favorite players ever. 
Patrick was one of my favorite players of the 2010s, man. I, I, I used to love this dude. He was a monster. It was a shame he retired early, but one day he'll get into the Hall of Fame. No doubt about it. They also had other Mike Linebacker, Navarro Bauman, and, and top pass rusher, Alden Smith. Alden Smith, man, how the mighty have fallen. Alden Smith, this dude was a beast. This dude was probably the, the best pass rusher in the NFL. If not the best, he was one of the best pass rushers in the NFL, and he just completely fell off. It's a damn shame. And of course, I'm not forget they had cornerback Carlos Rogers. You know, midway through the season, Alex Smith got dinged, and Colin, and thus the world was introduced to Colin Kaepernick. Kaepernick got the job back, and when Alex Smith was healthy, you know, Alex Smith never returned. It was the beginning of the Kaepernick era in San Francisco. They finished the season at 11 wins, four losses, and one tie. In the playoffs, Kaepernick just dominated the Green Bay Packers, a team he ironically grew up idolizing and wanted to play for. Meanwhile, the Packers quarterback wanted to play for the 49ers. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> they, they went to the NFC Championship game to face the Atlanta Falcons, who were the top seed in the NFC. They defeated them, and the 49ers were on their way to the Super Bowl for the first time since 1994. And thus, this game was dubbed as the Har Bowl, the Harbaugh Bowl, however you want to look at it. The game started, and why the way, Big Brother was dominating and beating up Little Brother. Flacco hit Anquan Bolden for a touchdown pass, for making 7 to nothing. I mean, Anquan Bolden, man, I'll never understand why the Baltimore Ravens released him after this season, because he was perhaps the best receiver they ever had. But, you know, it is what it is. And then Flacco hit other... Big tight end, Dennis Pitta, for a touchdown. Man, now, just like that, it was up 14 nothing. Then at the end of the half, Flacco hit Jacoby Jones for a long touchdown pass. Jacoby Jones fell, got back up, put a spin move on him, went to the end zone, and did a nice little dance, <laughs> end zone touchdown dance. I mean, Jacoby Jones was a fun player to watch. I believe the dance was called the Beanie Weenie. No, Jacoby Jones from New Orleans, for all you don't know. Them New Orleans niggas, they <laughs> have all these weird dances. And at half, going into halftime, it was up 21-6. to six. Then after halftime, Jacoby Jones set the, the Super Bowl record for the longest play in Super Bowl history, a 109-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And just like that, the Ravens were up 28-6. to six. And then all of a sudden, see Joe Flacco, I mean not Joe Flacco, Jacoby Jones doing the tribute to Ray Lewis, doing the squirrel dance in the end zone. The lights went out. <laughs> the lights went out in the fucking Super Bowl. I never, I, mean, I would never get watching this with my dad, you know, my dad and my mom and me, we were all watching this, and we're just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I, just, I just couldn't believe what was going on with this. Like, I cannot believe the lights went out during the fucking Super Bowl. But when the lights, but those lights went out, and the 49ers lights went on, they stormed back into the game. First with a Crabtree touchdown to make it 28-13. to Then a Frank Gore touchdown run to make it 28-20. to Then a Kaepernick touchdown run. You know, the Kaepernick touchdown run, and just like that, the 49ers were back in the game. The Ravens settled for two field goals to get a 34-point lead. To get a 34 to, I believe, what, 34 to 29 lead. Something like that. And then on the last drive of the game, Kyle Kaepernick tried Michael Crabtree in the end zone. And, you know, some say it was, he was pass interference. It was a controversial call. But, hey, no flag, no flags were thrown. And just like that, it was a turnover on downs. The Baltimore had the ball. Baltimore ended up taking the safety. They punted the ball. And that was game. The Baltimore Ravens were Super Bowl champions for the second time in franchise history by defeating the 49ers 34-31. That's concluding one of the probably one of the best Super Bowls of all time. It's definitely top 20 in my opinion. Top 20. If you want to push it top 10, that's your business. But I'd say more 20. That 11-20 to 20 range. But uh, here's what it is. Ray Lewis went out a champion. John Harbaugh got a, got a Super Bowl. Ed Reed finally got his ring. Terrell Suggs finally got their ring with their big brother, Ray Lewis, who went out of champ. And Joe Flacco silenced all the haters. Joe Flacco's 2012 playoff run was probably one of the best playoff runs by a quarterback ever. This man, Joe Flacco, threw 11 touchdowns and zero interceptions in just that one playoff run. Just that one playoff run. Like, look, and I'm not trying to compare Flacco to Joe Montana, but Joe Montana in four Super Bowls, which he played in 81, 84, 88, and 89, threw 11 touchdowns and zero picks. It took Joe Montana four combined Super Bowls to do what Joe Flacco did in a single playoff run. Again, I'm not saying Flacco's better than Montana. I'm not saying that because that's just sacrilege. That's just blasphemy, as Stephen A. Smith would say. But I'm just saying, just shows you how great Flacco was that year. He got up, he got the big contract, and he was never the same after that. <laughs> but hey, what do you guys think? What do you Ravens fans think? Ravens Flack, whatever you guys call yourself, Ravens Nation. Was it was it a top? Top Super Bowl of all time? Was it the greatest ever? Is it top five, top ten? Do you agree with me that's in the 11 to 20 range? Let me know in the comment section down below. 
a great game. Great game and a great way for the great Ray Lewis to go out. All right. See you all.